Today we're going to talk about the brain model along with the purple nervous system model. And so for the most part, we're going to focus on the brain model though. So when you look at the brain model, a lot of times students get overwhelmed and there's really no reason for that. There are functions that you need to know and then certain structures, but oftentimes when they see it, they immediately want to think that there's over a hundred things they have to know and that's just not the case. So there are three pages of structures in your lab manual. The first page is going to have structures that start off at 1A and you're responsible for that page of information. And then when you look at the next page, the structures go down to number like 128 and you're responsible for those. But then at the bottom of that page, there are two different charts, right? There's one on the left and one on the right. And above those, it says other structures students are not responsible for. And then when you flip the page, those charts continue. And so that's a page and a fourth that you don't have to, you don't have to know. Double check with your instructor though, and verify that that's actually the case. So what we're gonna do is discuss these structures that you are responsible for and their functions. So here I've given you an example. On the left-hand side of your page shows almost every structure is circled. And then in the middle, the ones that you are not responsible for are circled. So you can see right there that boom, we knocked about half of them out of the way. And then when you look on the right-hand side, you can see that those are the ones that you actually have to know. And so if you go through your lab manual or any of the pictures that you're studying, start whiting out the structures that you don't have to know. And that way you can focus in on the ones that you are responsible for. We're gonna begin with the exterior of the brain. And when I say exterior, I'm talking about the outer portion of the model. In another video, I have already discussed lobes of the brain. So you need to check out that video. To give you a refresher that you have four lobes that are discussed on this brain. You're gonna see the frontal lobe at number two, which is at the prefrontal cortex here. You're gonna have the temporal lobe, which is closer to the ears. You're gonna have the parietal lobe, which is above that, and the occipital lobe, which is behind it. Another tip is to merge the models together. So as you're studying the brain model, merge it with the purple nervous model. What you will see here is that you have the purple nervous model, which has a cap, and that cap is what you need to look at. Looking at the cap, you can see that you will have the frontal lobe, temporal lobe, parietal lobe, and occipital lobe. They are identified by different numbers than what's on the brain 3D model. Continuing our discussion of the exterior of the brain, what you will find is that there's these hills and valleys a valley or depression is going to be a sulcus or sulci. There are several sulci throughout the brain, but the ones that we will focus on today will start off at number 20. You have the central sulcus. The central sulcus is located here. The central sulcus will end up dividing the frontal lobe from the parietal lobe. In front of it, you will have a gyrus. The gyrus there is known as the precentral gyrus, and the gyrus behind it is known as the postcentral gyrus. At number 25, here, you have the parieto occipital sulcus. Obviously, by its name, it's going to separate the parietal lobe from the occipital lobe. At number 28, you have your lateral cerebral sulcus. It's also known as the sylvian fissure. Here, you can see that the frontal lobe and the temporal lobe as well as the parietal lobe are separated. Your longitudinal fissure is not shown. There's also not a number for it on this model, but it is the hemisphere divider. So it's going to go straight down the middle of the brain. Let's discuss the gyri that are on the 3D brain model. Two of these you have already seen or heard before. So starting off, you have your precentral gyrus. Your precentral gyrus is located before the central sulcus. It is on the frontal lobe. It's the very back portion of the frontal lobe and it deals with motor function. Behind the central sulcus is your postcentral gyrus. Where your precentral gyrus was identified at 1A or 10, your postcentral gyrus is identified at 1B or 11. 
Your postcentral gyrus is on the very beginning, the anterior portion of your parietal lobe. The inferior portion of it actually deals with taste, and the superior portion of it deals with kinesthetic senses and things that your skin can detect, like pain and temperature, as well as pressure and touch. Your cingulate gyrus would be located above the corpus callosum, so you would have to do a medial view of the brain. Your cingulate gyrus deals with emotions, also associated with the limbic system. On the purple nervous model, there is a cap and here you can see the structures that are associated with each lobe. So at 31, you have your sensory cortex. At 32, it identifies a motor cortex. On the brain model, these areas are gonna be called somatosensory cortex and somatomotor cortex. That would be on your precentral gyrus and your postcentral gyrus. Number 33 on this model is known as your auditory cortex. Number 34 is your visual cortex at your occipital lobe. And number 35 is known as Broca's area, which is for speech. Still looking at the exterior of the brain model, but going further down, you will see that we have cranial nerves. There's another video on cranial nerves. Let's discuss a few more external structures on the brain model. We will begin with the cerebellum. The cerebellum is a larger structure at the base of the brain and here you will see that you have motor function. It's identified by several numbers. These numbers include number six, 128, 129, and 130. With respect to motor function, your cerebellum is gonna help with balance and posture and coordinating those. At number 125, you have the olive. On this model, it has a green color. The olive has two parts, an inferior and a superior. The inferior portion is going to be involved with the cerebellum and motor function, whereas the superior portion is involved with auditory information. Your pituitary gland receives information from the hypothalamus, and it's going to relay that information to help control other glands. Those other glands include your thyroid, your adrenal glands at the kidneys, the ovaries and testes, this also allows it to be involved in a complicated feedback loop, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. This axis deals with body temperature, mood, immune system, digestion. This video concludes our discussion about external structures on the brain model. If you're looking for medial structures, check out another video.